<laughs> Stop it. Good evening, everyone. How you doing? I'd like to tell you that I love the sea of green I'm seeing. My high school colors were Kelly green and white, so I feel like I'm so at home right now. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming out. came up with that color scheme. You are amazing. Uh, we're going to call this public hearing to order at Ms. Voss, 6.04 p.m. on October the 23rd. Uh, we'll start with item number 26, and that's going to be the county administrator. Mr. Administrator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, item 26 seeks your approval of a proposed amendment to the Southwood Integrated Development Order to allow a proposed facility to serve adults with cognitive and developmental disabilities. The proposed use is located on city-owned property and will amend Map H of the Southwood Development of Regional Impact if approved. The proposed amendment to the Integrated Development Order requires the approval of both the city and the county commissions, and we have several speaker cards. I have uh, three, yes, three total speaker cards. Um, I will start from the top. My first speaker is Miss Allison Tant Richards, who I believe is your fearless leader. Name and address for record, please, ma'am. Hello, everybody. I'm Allison Tant Richard, and I am on the board of Independence Landing. Everyone, I'm speaking on behalf of my board members who are here, as well as everyone wearing the green shirts. So if everyone wearing green would stand up so we can all say hello. This is, I'm speaking on behalf of them, so they don't have to. So we're not going to take up your whole night. So Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. So Independence Landing is a not-for-profit or nonprofit that was formed for the purpose of building a planned residential affordable housing community um, and uh, working with the city and the county staff in, in Southwood. Just so you know, this is a growing public need and societal need that is not going to stop. Right now, um, with, it, with the Agency for Persons with Disabilities, there are estimated 55,000 Floridians receiving or on the wait list to receive services from APD. Regulators believe that that number is a third lower than the actual number who, of people who are either not diagnosed, not registered for services, or misdiagnosed, that the number is higher actually to 150,000 Floridians who should, who have dis cognitive and other disabilities that need to be served. Housing experts believe that between 70 to 80,000 Floridians right now are living at home with aging parents. And this is the first generation of people with disabilities to routinely outlive their parents' abilities to take care of them. When the last parent dies, a person with disabilities Disabilities is their, their first option and first line of defense um, when another family member is not available is a nursing home or a group home. Independence Landing has a different vision, um, one with a thriving campus with activities and, and, and supports and enrichment so that people can live full and long lives. Uh, we have had weekly meetings out at Southwood. I've been out there every Wednesday. I call it Wonderful Wednesday in the Wood. I'm there to meet with any citizen who is anxious to talk with me about disabled people and what this might be. I have had only three meetings in the last year and a half with no one shown. Um, we have been on the CDD agenda, we've been on the HOA agenda, and we've held multiple open houses so that residents of Southwood can learn about what we're doing. We've been very transparent. Anytime that there's been a new development, we've shared it. We have fundraised across the community and have 800 plus donors, and um, we uh, Really appreciate the county and the city staff with working with us, as well as the professionals who've lent their time and efforts to us. And we ask your favorable consideration. Thank you, ma'am. Um, I believe I have um, Richard Dor uh, Dorabi here. If anybody wants to ask questions, Richard Rory, wait for us. Oh, right, there he is. There. He is. All right, so Richard Robbie is here for questions, and then I have David Weiss to speak. Name and address for the record, please, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, David Weiss, Alzheimer McMullen, 123 South Calhoun Street. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the board. I very much appreciate the opportunity to speak today. Um, Allison said most of what I'd like to say and said it very well, so I'm not going to reiterate much. Um, I do represent Independence Landing. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to speak. Um, just wanted to point out, uh, as Allison said, staff has been great to work with, has done an incredible job at helping us uh, get through this process. Um, I think that the staff report um, does a very good job of summarizing the project. Um, 
and uh, approvals recommended by staff, planning commission recommended approval uh, by unanimous vote, and um, I think certainly this uh, proposed amendment is consistent with the comprehensive plan. Um, with that, I will conclude and uh, happy to answer any questions anyone has. Thank you, sir. Um, thanks so much. I want to thank the uh, <clears throat> first. I want to thank Allison for her leadership, but I want to thank the South Southwood community uh, for their collaborative uh, nature with working with Allison and the group from Independence Landing to to create something that uh, the the folks who will uh, live in Independence Landing will love, but also that the community of Southwood would appreciate having. And so that that is the perfect example of two. Uh, entity sitting down to come up with something that works for everybody. And so I, I know that um, the, the folks in here are green shirts and happy, but I think uh, just as just as much as that, the residents of uh, Southwood are happy too, and that's, that's just as important. Commissioner Dozier, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think you said that well. I echo what you said. I'm happy to make a motion for option one. Motion. Option one has been moved by Commissioner Dozier, seconded by Commissioner Lindley. I'll, you want to? I was just going to echo your thanks, Allison, but to all of you, and I wish we caught this earlier. This is going to move fast, but everyone has different ways of communicating, so no kids should be able to or have to leave the chambers. So um, just wanted to say that. We all have different ways of communicating, so thanks for being here. Thanks for bringing your young people. Hope they have this resource. All those in favor of the motion on the floor indicate by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Congratulations, and thank you again. Commissioners, we'll move now to item number 27. That item is brought to us by the county administrator. We will have a few speakers on this item. Mr. Administrator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This item seeks the board's approval of a North Monroe freestanding emergency room type C site plan development plan, which requires your review and approval uh, at a public hearing, which is reflected in option one. We're happy to answer any questions you might have. As the chairman noted, we have several speakers on this item. I would like to start the speakers by email that was sent. I believe it might have been sent to all of us, but this one is just addressed to me. Uh, this, this young lady has asked that I read, I respectfully request that Commissioner Maddox read my comment during the public hearing and that the county attorney ensures that they become, ensure that they become part of the public record of the hearing. <clears throat> and, and that item has been distributed and will be a part of the uh, record. The item reads, uh, already there is a patient's first uh, North Monroe Street, an urgent care center at 328, uh, 3258 North Monroe Street, which could provide emergency services. Moreover, apparently, <clears throat> distance from the proposed uh, road, uh, US 27 North location or the CRMC standalone ER to the Capital Regional Medical Center, uh, Gaston, Gaston Memorial Campus at 23, uh, 186 Blue Star Highway via I-10 and US-90 West is less than 21 miles, about 20 minutes for, 20 minutes for ordinary drive and much less time for an emergency vehicle. It seems clear to me that the patients first in the, in the Gaston Memorial CRMC would suffice as nearby emergency facilities without constructing a new ER at the proposed already overburdened and dangerous location. Citing an ER, citing an, uh, an ER at the proposed location would cause would cause to be uh, fraught with even more danger. An intersection that is so near. I'm guessing four. Four intersection that is so near the US 90 North I-10 interchange and already crowded with, with uh, existing uh, businesses on the west side of US North uh, 27 North. This crowded, all, this crowded area already gives caution to commuters traveling on that section of US 27 North and to those headed towards either westbound or eastbound Interstate 10. These businesses include Wahoo Seafood and Grill, uh, Holiday Inn and Suites Tallahassee, Best Western Plus, uh, North Tallahassee, Quality Inn, Quality Inn and Suites by Radisson, Tallahassee, uh, Burger King, Waffle House, Baymont by Wyndham Tallahassee, and Microtel Inn and Suites by Wyndham Tallahassee. 
Adding to these uh, densely crowded areas are those on the east side of U.S. North, uh, U.S. 27 North, including Fairfield, Fairfield Inn by Marriott Tallahassee North, I-10, and the Walmart Supercenter. Although I couldn't, I could find no indication that a environmental impact study (EIS) has been done regarding this this project or its findings. Such an assessment must be done to determine the environmental impact on uh, Forstead and other. Nature, uh, natural areas near the project before plans move ahead. The EIS should include an ill uh, effects on the Floyd, I'm, I'm sorry, the Frank Lloyd Wright House in Okahiki Prairie Park and on nearby residential areas. It is both frightening and ironic that deciding that signing an ER at this existing uh, <laughs> Listen, this woman was serious about me reading this thing. <laughs> uh, signing an ER, I'm, I'm almost done. ER at this, at this existing high traffic location could result in an even greater number of vi uh, vehicle colli uh, collisions and a greater number of human injuries and death before, deaths before the Board of Leon County Commissioners move ahead. With this project, I trust that my statement and those who speak against this project will be taken into most serious uh, considerations. Uh, this is signed by Catherine Tharp. Mr. Chairman, point of personal privilege. Please. Uh, we were talking about that debris a um, couple of items ago. I was wondering if we could get a couple of logs and light them and put them right down that table to keep us warm in here. It is a little, it is a little cool. Yeah. Can we be taken care of? Thank you. I hope we can put a log out there and just light it. And, you know. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure the fire marshal. But uh, Mr. Administrator, speakers, please. Certainly, Mr. Chairman. First speaker, Parker Collins. Name and address for the record, please. Three minutes, sir. Yeah, it's uh, 904 Parker Drive. Um, yeah. I'm just speaking right now as a, a person that enjoys Lake Jackson and all the uh, wonderful uh, recreation and wildlife uh, areas in Tallahassee. We have a great park system. Uh, we enjoy uh, Lake Alberta. On the south side, and Lake Henrietta, and um, of course Lake Jackson. And Lake Jackson, as you know, has a big history of uh, pollution from uh, Interstate 10 back in uh, the 70s when it was built. Uh, so I'm just opposing this uh, particular development because it's on a extremely, if you know the area, it's on an extremely. Uh, um, Steep slope, and there's already always been a uh, already been a development there with the uh, assisted living place that um, uh, resulted in the uh, damaging the spring for this uh, Frank Lloyd Wright house, which is called a spring house because it has a spring there, <laughs> and it doesn't have a spring anymore. Uh, anyway, I was just saying that uh, Lake Jackson is a, one of our uh, Leon County's treasures and. So is the Frank Lloyd Wright uh, house. And so I just oppose this because it's a really big, intrusive uh, development, picking a whole city block and requiring a huge, um, you know, flattening of the area, a lot of fill being brought in. So that's about all I have. So thank you. Thanks, sir. Next speaker. Next speaker. Next speaker is Chase Christensen. Good evening. Uh, Chase Christensen, Chief Operating Officer at Capital Regional Medical Center, 3257 Thoreau Avenue. Certainly appreciate the opportunity to address the Commission this evening and members of the community. Uh, Capital Regional, moving forward, is incredibly excited about this project, recognizing the value that we will bring to the Lake Jackson area and to the North Monroe portion and the west and northwest portions of Tallahassee uh, with this project, 24-7, 365 emergency services, uh, that will increase the level of health care services available to this portion of the population that up until now has had to travel at least east of Thomasville Road to, uh, to, to receive emergency medicine health care uh, services. In terms of selecting a site when we uh, propose uh, freestanding emergency departments such as this, we embarked on a process with a planning development uh, firm uh, that specializes in health care analytics to determine an appropriate spot from a utilization standpoint, where our facility would be best served. Um, that analysis 
basically prompted us the existing location that we're at. If you look at the two most proximate zip codes, uh, they are the two zip codes with the, high, the largest level of population here uh, in the county. They also bear out the highest utilization of emergency uh, room visits here in the county. And as you look back to 2015 until uh, the quarter one of this year, uh, they've experienced a 20% growth in emergency room visits. So all of those factors led us to believe that selecting this particular site and taking all due process as it relates to the appropriate construction and engineering of this site uh, will better serve the community going forward. And we look forward to, uh, to being part of, of Lake Jackson and North Monroe Corridor uh, going forward. Thank you for your consideration. Appreciate it. Thanks, sir. Can I ask a question, please? Yes, please. Are you all um, in building uh, this? Are you all seeking to secure uh, funds from, from the CRA, for chance, or, or from the city or from the county government to do this project? We are not. We're funding this. Okay. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I understood that from, from the jump. Yes, sir. You, you all are looking to serve as uh, human, human beings. Of course. Okay. All right. I'm finding it hard pressed that anyone objects to someone willing to build uh, a facility to serve human beings with health care, uh, that that's a problem. But this, that's why this is a public hearing. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Next speaker, Bird Lewis Mashburn. Name and address for the record, please. Name and address for the record, please, once you get to the podium. There you go. I still don't know what you said. Name and address for the record, please. Thank you. I'll be yes. happy to. Bird Lewis Mashburn, 3117 Okahiki Road, Tallahassee, Florida, 32303. Um, this was already said, but it was hard for some of us to hear what was said. One minute from this proposed site is a walk-in urgent care center on the same road. One minute from this site. Ten minutes from this site is TMH Northeast Emergency Room at I-10 and Thomasville Road that is barely used. This is an already dangerous intersection where I-10 merges with 27. Right past that is Walmart and 27, Okahiki Road and Livingston Road and 27. You, you're bringing ambulances and fire trucks into this already dangerous intersection. There's no need for it. It's going to increase the danger. It's on a very steep, environmentally sensitive hill in the lake protection zone. Um, it's a quiet neighborhood. It won't be anymore. This little book published by the Frank Lloyd Wright Building Conservancy by Princeton Architectural Press, has the 74 Frank Lloyd Wright sites open to the public. Lewis Springhouse is in this book. There is an iPhone app for this book. There are people coming to Tallahassee for no other reason than to visit this house. It's quiet down there. People say how amazing it is to be so close to I-10 and 27, and it's still quiet. It won't be any more if you do this. Now, I've been told by almost everybody I've talked to about this that this is a done deal. Where's John Daly? Where's, where are they? Okay, um, I don't agree with that. You have the power, five of you. They can't vote, can they, if they're not here? Can they vote? No, no ma'am, they cannot. Five people are going to decide this, and you have the power, and it's not a done deal until you vote. Thank you. <clears throat> Next speaker is George Huddleston, project engineer. Okay, if needed. Next speaker, Marcel. Uh, thank you. Hi, Appreciate I'm Marcel it. Praetorius. I live at 904 Parker Drive, 32303. My background is I'm a retired nurse practitioner and nurse, and now I'm an avid birder and user of Lake Jackson. 
I've had the opportunity more than a couple hundred times to have to navigate the area by Okehipke Road, and I could tell you how difficult the traffic pattern is there now before we even consider making changes and, and putting an emergency room. I have extensive background in health care, and I question duplication of services when there's a higher level emergency room very close by. I also think if when you look at this really, really steep hill that you're flattening the area and compressing all the springs and all the natural resources underneath, I'm wondering about the drainage studies that have done to look at the impact of what it will do down the hill. It's, I question about the noise of the ambulances going in and out at night for our tourism, for the people staying in the motels across the street. I question the safety of trying to widen or change this intersection with the proposed numbers of people that will be coming into the emergency room there. We need to look at the total community. I, I would um, urge Capital Region to be working more on his plan for the south side where there's a demonstrated need for the services and if this needs to go forward to have more studies done other than the one that they're doing with their company to see what the impact will be done on the spring house and the areas around it. I'd be very saddened if I can't get to go down Okehipke Road safely <coughs> to go down to the park there into Crowder Landing because it, it is pretty dangerous now trying to get back out. And as I said, it would be more dangerous if you have an emergency room when you have one just down the street that's a higher level of care. Thank you, ma'am. Next speaker. George Lewis. Name and address for the record, please, sir. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners George E. Lewis, 2nd, 203 North Gadsden Street, number 6. I'd like to begin by complimenting your staff on this item. They have been very generous with their time and educating some of us about the nature of this project. The only way they could have been more helpful is to recommend that you deny it. I'm going to make a couple of points. Section 10-6.806C1A of the Land Development Ordinance says an applicant must demonstrate that presently exists or is expected to exist an unmet need, demand, within the community for the public benefit from the establishment of the facility. They have submitted a three-page document that supposedly covers the need question. The only question, information in there about any need is that we're short on EMTs. And they have a citation. I looked up the um, reference. I could not find any reference to Beyond County or other counties and what their number of EMTs and paramedics is. However, I did find on the Department of Health site that the EMTs per resident, um, it really should be residents per EMT, is controlled by the number of vehicles and aircraft that have to have paramedics and EMTs on them. Nothing in there about the number of paramedics and EMTs that you need with respect to uh, physical facilities, fixed facilities. It's not, and even the race resolution of number of uh, EMTs is not accounted for logically in a per um, facility site. My second point is to address, ask you to look at the environmental function and the mound building that's going to take place on this site. The elevation is going to have to be built, or they want to end up at a 215-foot elevation, and they're going to have to put 10 feet more additional dirt on this or compact it before they can use it, and then they've got to remove that extra 10 feet. Um, I, I hope that this would tell you you have, should not have taken the lake protection out of the slope controls no. and that you uh, rethink 
some of the, ex 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 the way that you're dealing with the weight protection items. There are good reasons for putting them in there and no good reasons for weakening them. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next speaker. Next speaker is Gary Hunter. That's the last speaker card. Thank you, Chairman, Commissioners, Gary Hunter, 119 South Monroe Street, Suite 300. I'm an attorney with Hopping Green Sam's here on behalf of the applicant, Capital Regional Medical Center. I'll be, I'll be brief, and then we've got our engineer here in the event you have questions about this site that he could answer probably more capably than I could. Uh, let me make a few points. Principally, uh, we're not asking for a rezoning. We're not asking for a comprehensive plan change. This site is, is zoned lake protection, and it allows this community service uh, to be located in this, in this location. Uh, we, there are, uh, this is a type C site plan review, so we went through uh, lots of reviews at, with your staff. We went through three different ARM meetings. Uh, your staff was as thorough as uh, any staff uh, anywhere in the state where I work has ever been in dealing with a project, and uh, they were doing that and looking out and making sure your code was being complied with with, with this site. Um, a site uh, in this location is an appropriate site for this facility, as we have demonstrated in our application, as your staff has accepted and your DRC ultimately accepted with our application. The chief operating officer of the hospital sat up here and testified. Uh, as to why the hospital had concluded that this location was uh, appropriate. There were over 40,000, 40,000 emergency room visits out of those two zip codes that will be served by this area in the last 12-month, recorded 12-month period through the second quarter, actually first quarter of this year. Over 40,000 emergency room visits. If you look at the proximity of this facility in contrast to the TMH emergency room facility at I-10 and Thomasville Road and the existing hospitals in the community, th consider how close those are to one another in contrast to where this is located and the area of the county which it will serve. Uh, it, it's, it's a needed facility and a location where you all have already determined it's allowed and appropriate. Your staff has done an analysis and concluded we meet the criteria. I'm going to submit for the record tonight uh, our revised site plans, just so it's in the record, to uh, the, the, which addresses the conditions that were imposed upon us by DRC, and we're happy to go through those conditions if you want to take the time to do that. But just so it's in the record, the, the site plan uh, was revised to deal with the issues the DRC brought up um, uh, during that review back in the summer. Um, $16 million investment on that part of the community with um, uh, over um, almost three dozen full-time positions, fully staffed, um, with very good jobs in an important role to serve um, health care needs of this community, and, and we appreciate your support. We're happy, again, to answer any questions you may have about the site. We still have to go through the EMP process. Uh, this is a site plan approval. We won't build a site if we don't meet your environmental standards. I mean, you can't. Uh, and so, uh, and that process is ongoing. But we appreciate your consideration and time. I'm going to hand this packet to the clerk just so it's in the record. But thank you. Thank you, sir. I have Commissioner Proctor and Commissioner Dozier in queue to speak. Commissioner Proctor. Commissioners, uh, I've looked at a number of pictures that have been presented tonight. I've heard um, several reports uh, giving us an overview about Hurricane Michael. I uh, heard Commissioner Dozier talk about the need for us to reflect uh, upon our um, uh, inter-county uh, responses, uh, our sense of reflection jointly with multi-county needs. Uh, it would be an awesome uh, addition to uh, a facility located on I-10 and uh, Highway 27. It would capture, uh, just say this for instance, just hypothetically, if we had a Category 4 that ravaged our area, our surrounding area. Just hypothetically, if we had a Category 4 in a storm affected Wigham, Georgia, uh, Atapogas, or uh, Havana, north uh, side of uh, Gadsden County, and there's an emergency room right here. Just imagine if uh, maybe seven or eight counties in the Panhandle uh, area, there was devastation and not enough places to triage and treat. Uh, wounded victims, that we had a, a, a site 
Uh, we have a lot of places for heads to go in beds to sleep, a lot of places to food. But one of the things in the emergent uh, moment is the need for uh, medical treatment and for all the activities that are in that area of all due respect to the environmental concerns um, that, that, that have been put forth, I find it compelling just after the last two weeks uh, the regional need for additional uh, emergency. I mean, I could foresee the need for one over there on the um, Highway 90. Uh, I mean, it, there's a need. So I am um, in the moment in context of what, I mean, our own meeting was shifted to tonight, this night, uh, which has loaded up our agenda. But it just, just makes sense in that ours is the duty to provide the health, safety, and welfare for citizens. And we are expanding the sense of responsibility that Tallahassee may have to smaller counties. Um, I see no reason to having uh, this uh, applicant go through the rigor in having met the uh, approval of our staff. I find nothing compelling that makes me want to uh, uh, second guess our staff or to rescind uh, the recommendations coming from staff. So I offer a motion that we uh, uh, approve this, this matter. Motion for approval has been made by Commissioner Proctor. Do I second to the motion? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Lowe's. I have Commissioner Doge in queue to speak. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you all for coming out. Um, so we, we've run into many of these issues. Mr. County Administrator, this project, as has been said, has gone through multiple uh, review committees and then back to it. Mr. County Attorney, you and I spoke about this yesterday. There have been modifications to the plan along the way, particularly in reference to stormwater. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Okay. I may have missed this in the item. I know there was some reference to FDOT and right-of-way issues and other things, but I, I do think there is, I should say, meeting our rules first, there, there's, to me, there's little, um, little room here um, to deny something that is on a divided highway, even though it is adjacent to a neighborhood. So I want to get to that piece because I think mitigating the impact is what we can do and I think what folks want to do. Um, coming out of Okahiki, I've never been able to pronounce that correctly, you have to make a right, I believe, and go up and maybe do a U-turn in order to head back towards town. Is there any plans? I know we're right at the exit from I-10 there. Is there any plans to mitigate that traffic congestion or deal with that in any ways? Mr. Chairman, uh, yes. Commissioner Dozier, I would have to defer to, I, think, I guess it would be, I was going to go to Tony, I think probably Brent, the member of the DRC, David, who would be best to, uh, position to answer that. I'm sure, again, I know that there's an attachment with all the conditions listed and it's probably included, but whoever on the DRC can make their way up to the podium, please. I saw David standing up and I figured he was going to take one for the team. He <laughs> stood up. <laughs> uh, Commissioner, it, it did go through our concurrency review. Yes. Um, as far as traffic operations, uh, it is a FDOT roadway. And um, they participate in the review, and they signed off from it from a traffic operations standpoint. So it met those two tests. It met the concurrency standard that we that we looked at, and it met the traffic operations standpoint as well. And people will be able to access the site whether they're traveling north or south on Monroe there, or will they have to go and do a U-turn? I mean, this is an emergency facility, so and access from the neighborhood is already challenging. So I'm just curious. Um, North, <clears throat> northbound, they will turn into it. Southbound, they will do it. They will have to make that movement to get over there to it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think uh, I will support the item because I think it falls within our rules, but that is an issue that I think may be a critical need for the neighborhood and for those who are trying to get to the emergency facility. So if we need to bring this up at CRTPA and work with FDOT or staff can do that, I just I wonder if um, we can at least monitor it ongoing because yeah. that could be an issue. There's a series of, of conflicting turning movements there already, so that's the problem. You'd have to look at that corridor to, 
to adjust those turning measures. And that's kind of what I'm suggesting, yeah, that's David, kind of what, is yeah. looking at the whole quarter. It is like a comprehensive that, view of that quarter. Yeah, those curb cuts on the center <coughs> island, I don't know if they're, they're excuse me, um, they're not curb cuts, but the cuts in the island for the turns, it, it is challenging, um, as anyone who frequents that area knows. So, um, Mr. County Administrator, I think that's just something that we, we need to look at for benefit to CMR and to the neighborhood. Um, so thank you for that. Um, the only other thing that I wanted to mention, um, Mrs. Lewis, thank you for being here. Um, the Spring House is a little known treasure in our community. Um, and I just had a friend stay at Falling Waters recently. And some of the houses, I mean, they're iconic. We all know the images, even if we don't know their Frank Laurie Wright houses. I know Carrie Post is here. If there's anything we can do to elevate the Spring House and to think about the noise protection, things like that for the neighborhood, the TMH um, Center is an emergency facility. It does, I don't think it's as close to the neighborhood as I remember some of the houses there. I'm not very sure, but I would just encourage you all to um, think about noise intrusion into the neighborhood and other things like that and traffic, but really would love for more visitors to go to the Spring House as well. So thank you for that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I have a motion made by Commissioner Proctor, seconded by Commissioner Lowe's for option number one, which is staff recommendation. All those in favor of the motion for indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. We go now to item number 28. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner, is this your first and only public hearing to consider proposed resolution for a, vacant, uh, a vacation of a portion of a plat uh, for preserve at Buck Lake? Uh, this is a replatting, uh, uh, this is part of a larger replatting process, commissioners, and is consistent with Florida statutes and our land development regulations, uh, and, but does require a public hearing. That's what this item facilitates. I have no speakers on this item. Is there a motion for staff recommendation? Mo motion made by Commissioner Lindley, seconded by Commissioner Dozier. All those in favor, decay by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 5 0. We're moving back now to. The regular general business agenda, item number 19. I present that item myself. Commissioners, uh, really quick here, as you look at the item, you'll see that this is the uh, annual performance review for the county administrator in accordance with board policy uh, number 116, county administrator evaluation, the annual reporting process. Um, we all did our evaluations. You get an opportunity to look and see uh, who who said what and what we what we rated the, the county administrator. Um, me personally, I would like to say that uh, Vince, you've done a great great job over the past year. I would appreciate the hard work, the coordination, and, and I know that you know that a lot of of this evaluation that you got from gotten from us comes from how well your staff uh, does out in the field and in the offices here at Leon County. Uh, I would entertain a motion to uh, accept uh, a motion to ratify, which is option number one, the annual performance review of the county administrator. Motion for option one has been made by uh, Commissioner Lindley, second by Commissioner Dozier. Second, and I will say the best gift we could give to county administrator and our staff right now is no comments. So thank you. Yes, well done. yes, yes. All those in favor of the motion, before you came by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Item number 20, Mr. Administrator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, this item uh, provides an overview of your upcoming retreat process and seeks the board's approval of a proposed outline. Each year we have the opportunity to bring uh, this uh, item before you, uh, and there's always a little um, uh, time during the agenda for uh, in excess of the time that it takes you to update your strategic plan and go through that process that the board convenes on issues that uh, we expect to either uh, consume uh, uh, your time and energies in the upcoming year. It, um, so, and we'd like to provide uh, some ideas for you for that each year. And this year, um, there's a, a book, a new book that has been released uh, by a nationally renowned author. Uh, we've checked with his um, availability. Uh, he's written a book called Palaces for the People, which focuses on uh, what he terms social infrastructure. And uh, it seems to be really aligned with so much of what we're doing at the county beyond bricks and mortar uh, to achieve larger uh, goals, uh, quality of life goals in our community. And we thought it was a, 
it was a good opportunity should the board uh, accept this um, it will be in addition again to the to the board's uh, annual update for the strategic plan and with that we're obviously we're very happy to receive any additional direction that the board may deem uh, appropriate for your retreat is there a motion for staff recommendation like which is option number one I'd like to move option number one option number one has been moved by Commissioner yeah. Lindley seconded by Commissioner Deloge uh, any objection motion carries 5-0 we'll move now to item number 21 Mr. Administrator Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You moved so quickly, my technology uh, has to can't can't even keep up with you. But let me, uh, as I pull it up, uh, this agenda item, item number uh, 21, seeks your approval to modify the existing uh, State of Florida Springs Rec Restoration Grant Agreement for the design of Woodville, uh, the Woodville Sewer Project. Uh, the recommended modifications uh, include a reduction in the project scope to stay within the approved budget. Uh, and also a change in management uh, among state agencies. Uh, the item also provides commissioners a very comprehensive uh, overview of all the actions the county has taken to replace or upgrade existing septic tanks uh, through uh, Blueprint 2020, uh, the water quality portion, and all of the stormwater improvement fundings and state grants, as well as uh, providing uh, uh, other ongoing initiatives and future policy issues that will be coming before the board we thought it was a good opportunity to remind you of everything that's going on in this area and to kind of get everybody up to speed on that in addition to the um, the action that we're seeking regarding uh, the grant agreement so with that we're happy to answer any questions you might have I do not have any speakers on this uh, on this item Commissioner Proctor Mr. Chairman uh, I'm well pleased by um, the presentment of facts data and the projected um, laying of pipes uh, in this area. Uh, for many years now, I have uh, suggested that what impacts growth in this area more than anything is the placement of uh, pipes, sewer pipes, in the ground. And that there's a correlation between the kind of pipe that is inside the ground and it's a direct correlation to the kind of activity above the ground and it also has a correlation to the size of the commercial building space that can occur in the area. So it is exciting for me as I know that uh, it's hard to impress um, anyone that you're working hard, voters, because sewer pipes is not the thing that, that's very uh, now, you just don't talk about sewer when you're, when you're campaigning. But in my heart of hearts, uh, it's been years now that a picture like the ones that we've been presented, uh, the outline and seeing what this can do to uh, bring an area to a 21st uh, century state of um, convenience, uh, health, um, security, and the protection for wall color springs inside of the spring uh, basin area. And that's why I'm very, very pleased to move uh, our staff's recommendation uh, on this very important project. And I want to thank them uh, for their uh, efforts. Thank you. Staff recommendation been moved by Commissioner Proctor, seconded by Commissioner Lindley. All those in favor of the motion on the floor indicate by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. We'll move now to item number 22, Mr. Administrator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This item seeks board approval to award tourism signature event grants to Springtime Tallahassee uh, and Red Hills Horse Trials. Both of the recommendations uh, before you exceed uh, the, the TDC's um, uh, thresholds, um, uh, at uh, which um, uh, require them to come back to the board for any recommendations uh, which go beyond $60,000. In those categories, uh, this issue, as you can tell by the item, raised uh, uh, some some other um, areas for improvement for us with the creation of potentially a new uh, grant funding category for what we um, conceive as the possibility of establishing a legacy events category. We explain that in the item. Happy to answer any questions about that, but we really just want uh, direction should the board deem it appropriate to uh, to bring you back a budget discussion item. Uh, on that uh, in the uh, FY 2020 cycle. With that, we're happy to answer any questions you might have. 
Options one, two, and three have been moved by Commissioner Lindley. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner DeLose. Commissioner Dozier. Uh, just quickly, Mr. Chair, Carrie, I know I'm, I don't have any questions. Um, well, we can dig into this later. I think the legacy is a great idea. Incredible feedback on how you handled emerging um, signature events in the last year. Happy to support this. But I, I do think, and Vince, I didn't make this comment earlier, but I think this nicely ties into the retreat as well. Even though um, infrastructure may be slightly different at times, the cross-country track is one example that is a direct tie between the two. So I hope we can reflect on how we support the use of these different facilities, um, the social infrastructure at the retreat as well. I really like this synergy. Thank you. Most has been made by Commissioner Lindley, seconded by Commissioner Deloge. Uh, Commissioner Proctor. I just want to point out that the money total in, in these events are, exceeds uh, the amounts that we're placing and have voted for tonight for mental health care uh, through uh, our uh, medical facilities. And I think that um, when we're really thinking about uh, what these events do, uh, I'm sure that Ms. Carrie Post uh, has some marker to indicate uh, how we recapture what I, I imagine we're, 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 we're looking at these as investment dollars because um, the money that we're putting out for these events um, theoretically uh, more than reward our community with, uh, with a bed tax. Um, I just don't see um, the amount of what each of these events do uh, for our economy. And I would hope that uh, in the year's future, uh, this category of funding, which seems to operate um, in its own vacuum, uh, with its own set of theories, but I can't help but observe that the critical needs of mental health are um, woefully underfunded if the horses for the Red Hills are received 75000 and all of total dollar value for mental health is 170 something is wrong. Uh, we need to check ourselves. So um, I'm hesitant but I like Ms. Carrie Post, and I love her leadership, and um, I know she does her work from her heart, and I respect somebody like that. But uh, this is no reflection at all. But I'm, I'm, I'm walking, uh, I think, with this body today because Carrie, Carrie Post uh, would not do anything uh, violative of our expectations to represent our county nobly. Uh, I have said before that for the amount of money we give Red Hills horses, this ought to be the Leon County Red Hills horse trial. Uh, we's a big player at the table, and we's not getting uh, a reflection of the kind of uh, branding that our names all come with, with this particular event, and I think it's something worth studying. Um, Otherwise, Mr. Chairman, I'm, 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 I'm in it because Carrie Post is, you know, I think she's exciting and does a great job. But I do recognize that if we can come this far with these good time events, we've we got to look at doing better with uh, mental health areas. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Motion made by Commissioner Lindley, seconded by Commissioner Deloge for staff recommendation. All those in favor of the motion on the floor came by saying aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. We'll move on now to item number 23. Mr. Chairman, may I also say that Ms. Brown, Ms. Post is here that in um, the report that our county administrator is going to be bringing back regarding the um, recovery, uh, reflecting upon our recovery, if there is a way that Ms. Post and her staff can supply us the economic, um, you know, the upside of what uh, the recovery did for our economy in particular, uh, whether or not we receive the major boost, a teeny weeny boost, um, some kind of boost in our um, hotel uh, accommodations. Uh, it's my understanding that many of our uh, hotels were, were um, at capacity. 
um, in that capacity spilled over with some of the scheduled events of football and regular activities. And I would be curious to know um, what was the uptick of our economy uh, in response to and hopeful that events can reflect the, the positive economic things that happen. Uh, there were, there were um, restaurants that ran out of food, you know. Um, um, but I think that there were some upsides for our community, and I hope that an economic analysis of that two-week, three-week, or however long event, uh, what that helped us with. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No problem. Commissioner uh, Doge, are you, are you waiting for the next item? All right. Um, Item number 23. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, uh, this item provides an overview of the street renaming process and an analysis of the renaming of Orange Avenue to Barack Obama Boulevard. Uh, this came at your direction at the September 4th Commission meeting. Commissioners, as you recall, uh, the item provides an overview of the street naming process. Uh, it goes on to provide other options and alternatives uh, that the board may wish to provide staff direction on in terms of renaming or, redesign or designating any county street in honor of uh, President Barack Obama. It, um, it's important to know that um, state statutes prevents the counties, uh, prevents uh, the county from renaming a state road. Uh, the renaming of any segment of a city street requires the city's approval. Uh, and the county ordinance provides guidance on the renaming of county roads with respect to safety and other issues for your consideration, which we've presented here. Uh, with that, uh, we're seeking your direction on this item, and I have one speaker card, Mr. Chairman. Speaker. Uh, Delantre Hallinger. Name and address for the record, please, sir. Mr. President. Good evening. Uh, Delantre Hollinger, uh, 501 Alpha Avenue. Um, I read the agenda item in its entirety and all of the attachments, and I want to thank the staff for doing such a tremendous job and compiling the uh, historical data and everything that the commission needs to make the decision. Would like to um, ask the commission to consider the Spring Hill Road option. Um, uh, I, I worked um, <clears throat> for the past three years to uh, get the legislature to designate uh, the state road portion of Orange Avenue is CK Steel Memorial Highway, which they uh, did earlier this year. Uh, and I think it would be very symbolic to have CK Steel Memorial Highway, have Barack Obama Boulevard cross over that, and then uh, the Anita Davis Preserve that we dedicated earlier this month uh, would now be on uh, Barack Obama Boulevard. Um, so I'd like for the commission to consider uh, that Spring Hill Road option. I think it's also uh, would be fitting that the first thing many people see when they come into our city, our county from the airport, uh, they'd be able to see that uh, Barack Obama Boulevard. So um, asking the commission to consider that. Thanks, sir. Um, Commissioner Proctor, I'm going to allow you to speak first since you brought this to the commission, and I'll go with Ms. Commissioner Doge. Mr. Chair, I'm sorry. May I jump in real quick? I have an alternative suggestion given no. the late time. I would like to make a motion to postpone this to December, and I can tell you why before we get into a discussion, if you would allow me. No. Commissioner Proctor? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I um, thank you so much. Um, in, in having had uh, in-suite counsel with uh, the county administrator um, who is advised of uh, the issues behind the issues and um, having a closer uh, upfront grasp uh, with that um, NCWE Council, I have been persuaded uh, by the comments coming from our um, NAACP president that the Spring Hill Road option um, may well be uh, more palatable to, um, to our chances um, in naming uh, a road after a great American president. Um, I, I'm appreciative for the effort, uh, for your open-hearted and open-mindedness uh, that we might do this, and um, I, I definitely want to respect um, um, the thoughts of the NAACP. I do not want to in any way conflict the cancel with uh, uh, Reverend C.K. Steele um, in any of those 
and I, I, I wouldn't want to do that. So um, I am willing, before making a motion, to listen to uh, the thoughts of um, my fellow commissioner, uh, Commissioner Dozier, who desires to postpone. Um, and if there is something uh, persuasive, then you know I'm, I'm open-minded. So I would like to hear her thoughts. Um, and if not persuaded, I'd like to offer a motion tonight. Commissioner Dozier. Thank you, Commissioner Proctor. My thought is this. We have a five out of seven members here today. This suggestion, which I am not opposed to, and I really appreciate staff's analysis of this. It was very interesting to look at Spring Hill and some of the other options and to see what the rules are about Orange and your three-year effort to have it designated for um, Reverend Seal. That was wonderful. So thank you for that effort on Orange Avenue. My thinking is that there, I have questions about this. There's some new ones. If the four of you are absolutely set on Spring Hill, as I anticipate that to be Commissioner Proctor's motion, um, by all means, keep going. I do think this may take more discussion. It is late. We've had a very long meeting. Our staff's been working very hard. And I would like to give this the time that it deserves. And I think we can wait until December just to talk through the different options. I really do like Spring Hill option, but I also kind of like the idea of the Pensacola Street option. And I wouldn't mind hearing from Riley House and some of the others on that. I, I would very much like to dig into this more, but I think given the late hour and the five-member board, it would be appropriate for us to, dis to consider this at our December meeting. Would you like to present that motion? I, I would make that motion again to postpone this to the December meeting again. I absolutely support the discussion. I look forward to it. I just want to give it the respect and the time it deserves. Okay. Motion is made po po postponed by Commissioner Dozier, seconded by Commissioner Delos. Uh, I have no more. Oh, I have no more Commissioner. Commissioner Come in, yes. I want to ask in terms of the, uh, the Pensacola Street option, uh, if the county administrator could tell us what's in play and what segments of Pensacola Street are we talking about some... Um, some side road, um, some little itty bitty pathway. Are we trying to marginalize and minimize uh, President Obama's name to, and, and restrict it to a small don't count stretch? What is at stake here? Mr. Chairman, uh, well, I'm not, again, you've got options before you, Commissioners. This is certainly not as long a segment, but we only presented to you options here that we felt like were highly uh, visible options. Um, so this particular segment is from Monroe Street to Franklin Boulevard. Uh, compared to the rest of them, short in, in segment, however high, high in visibility as it's located directly across from the state's capital, directly adjacent to the courthouse, connects uh, the Riley Museum and uh, Smoky Hollow um, commemorative, and uh, of course just in proximity to everything uh, downtown. Um, Beyond that, I can't speak to the to the uh, the relative um, uh, value of it aside from the um, the analysis that you have before you. Right. Well, Mr. Chairman, um, I'm real good. I'm not sure in terms of the uh, the absence of two commissioners. Commissioner Commissioner Daly may not be back with us to vote ever again. So we've seen the last of his vote. So there are six of us. Mm -hmm. um, I do believe that. By the time we bring it up, I'm not willing to do what the city commission do, did, to just go hire somebody. We will have a new commissioner, and um, I would love to, to have this input. Um, the value and the record of President Obama uh, speaks for itself, and I think would be persuasive to any um, right-thinking person. Um, I can wait till December, and I think that also important, um, and more specifically for me is the fact that um, Commissioner Jackson and I, we share Spring Hill Road as, a, um, as a, a boundary marker for our districts. So half the street from the center mark uh, going west is his district. And from the center mark uh, going um, east is District 1. So the fact that the District 2 commissioner is not here, I do want to respect him because this is a boundary 
of this district, and we share that road as a uh, demarcation point, and it, it well uh, is worthy for his input. If he dislikes that, then, you know, we'll deal with that. So, um, Solinger, I hope that you can appreciate my stance tonight, and we want to give um, our new our new commissioner coming on board and the commissioner whose district uh, abuts District 1, he's not here to give comments, and I, I want to make sure that we have uh, um, a strong uh, uh, house when we take that vote. So we can wait. Mm -hmm. I have Commissioner Lindley and Commissioner Deloge in queue to speak. Commissioner Deloge, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, anytime we name anything for anybody, it gets kind of, kind of squirrely. I, I'm fine, and I think it's appropriate that we do this. I worry a little bit about the impact to the homes, the businesses, and in the case of Orange Avenue, for instance, it's all chopped up. We've got three different owners and different rules about what you can and can't do. Um, I, I think personally that the idea of the, well, I don't have it in front of me here, the street right behind here that goes from the Capitol and that runs down to Smoky Hollow and runs by the Riley House is very appropriate. It's visible. It doesn't impact anybody, and I think it meets all the requirements. I think when we get into these, I mean, I, I've never had a road name change, but for those of us that have had a business, I can only imagine, and I know, like Orange Avenue, it would be a lot of money for a business to start changing letterhead and start changing business cards, and it sounds not that big of a deal, but it would be. And the personal residences, it's also an impact. So I think when we start talking about roads, unless they're brand new and they don't have a name on them, I'd have some concerns about just what we're doing to the community at large. So I think this meets the requirements, meets the needs, and I'd be very supportive of that. I mean, if, if there's the will to do something like that tonight, I'd go forward with that. I'm okay if we push this off a little bit, but I'm not sure what we're going to accomplish. I need, uh, we'll have Jimbo back at some point, but John is out. Rick will come on at some point. So um, I don't know what the will of the body is here. If there's a willingness to accept a substitute motion and, Try and see if there's any any uh, support for that, or do we want to continue the discussion? I think staff did a really nice job, but I'm very sensitive to the impact in the community at large because you, you start going down this path, you open up a lot of uh, uh, of issues. So, Commissioner uh, Lima, yeah, I think uh, I kind of agree with you. I mean, I I really like the Spring Hill Road concept. I think mm -hmm. it's more visible than Pensacola. But it does involve uh, 55 address changes, 29 of them are businesses. We might, uh, by delaying a little while, hear from some of the people who live on Spring Hill Road and see how they would be affected by this uh, kind of substantial change. And for the very reasons you brought up, I think we could have a better discussion. And when Commissioner Jackson's here and our new commissioner, yeah. we'll have a good discussion. This is not something that has to be done right away. We're all um, exhausted. We've had everybody's minds have been on hurricanes and elections and everything else. And this is a big deal. And I, th I mean, I'm interested in naming something after President Obama. I think that would be a great thing for our community to do, but not now, not tonight. So I'm supporting the motion to move, move it up a little ways. Thank you, Commissioner Lindley. Um, as for me, I, I, um, I appreciate the board allowing me to give respect to Commissioner Proctor for bringing this forth originally. Um, and I felt like he should have been the first person to speak on it and, and give his opinion on if he so wished to uh, pass his, his chance to make a motion on to someone else, then so be it. But uh, he did bring this to us and was very adamant about it. As a matter of fact, brought it to us twice. Uh, and I felt like he needed to, to have the first word on it. Uh, but I, I could take either, I like Spring Hill Road, I like the fact that you're coming in from the airport, I like the fact that it's, it's right there by uh, the Anita Davis Preserve, um, but Pensacola is very attractive too. If you think about the placement of it, the Riley House is right there, it's really close to um, to um, uh, Smoky Hollow and, and, and all that good stuff, and, and so either or can work for me, um, but as I said before, Commissioner Proctor did take the lead on this, and he did bring this back to us twice. He was very adamant about it, as a matter of fact. And I would respect his leadership on, on which one uh, he would like to see, and the, and the citizens of, of the South Side would like to see named as such. Uh, I believe his original thought was Orange Avenue, uh, but he had a change of heart to Spring Hill. And I'll be, I'll be listening at the meeting in, in December 
to see where where he wants to go from there. So I, I do appreciate um, Commissioner Dozier's thought and delaying Commissioner Proctor's uh, acceptance of that delay so we can get uh, um, incoming Commissioner Minor in to, to give his take on it as well as the Vice Chair. And uh, I, when we come to that time, I'm pretty sure that we'll have a consensus on where we want to be. I have a motion on the floor to postpone the vote on item number 23 to the December meeting. That motion is made by Commissioner uh, Dozier, seconded by Commissioner Deloge. All those in favor of the motion on the floor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. We're going now to item number 25. Mr. Chairman, you mean the term reschedule or postpone? Reschedule to December. Reschedule, postpone. Reschedule. Yeah, that's not the same thing. Okay, reschedule. Is that is the same thing. Okay. Okay. Yes, it's not, it's not terminated. Yes, sir. Okay. We're going to put reschedule because I'm just probably like reschedule more so to postpone. Uh, item number 25. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. This item uh, you took up earlier and under presentations and heard from the state attorney. Uh, I'm sorry, you already moved this up in the agenda. You already taken action on this. You're right. You're, yeah, it's the appointment item. And so that item, Commissioners, is before you. It seeks full board appointments uh, to the Advisory Committee on Quality Growth, Kennedy Roads, and COCA, as well as the Joint uh, School Coordinating Committee uh, and the TDC. All eligible uh, candidates. Um, uh, seeking appointment are included in your materials. We have no speakers on the side. Commissioner Brockman. I must admit, hit that by mistake. Commissioner Lilly. Uh, yeah, do you want to take these one at a time? Because I have some suggestions on those that are, are that we have choices. Okay. Uh, on option two, which is uh, Canopy Roads Citizens Committee, I'd like to nominate uh, a point. Paul Horn. Okay. Is there a second to that? Second. Any objection? Comment. Pardon me? I'd like to comment on that. Okay. On that one? Not on the, not on the candidate, the applicant, but I think that, um, and I hope that Commissioner Dozier is walking with me on this thought, that in terms of the canopy road um, issue, I, th I think that the amount of damage that canopies and trees have done to our power lines, I hope that is not premature. Maybe it's too late uh, for the cycle of, uh, destruction which occurred two weeks ago but I'm just hopeful that we are willing to add a little more cognitive and a little less uh, emotion to our love for canopy canopy and trees big old trees and a lot of these trees I've stated years ago uh, they're not healthy for our, our community security uh, they're not healthy for our ability to power and to circulate electricity. And I just feel that, um, God, how many more storms must it take with trees falling and living so close to those lines that there needs to be modification. And I would hope that at the, um, at the um, summit um, retreat that we have in December, that consideration to policies that would help us to take out uh, weak and, and ill trees, and that we would help prevent, uh, you know, the, 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 the harmfulness with which weak, weaker and dead trees cause when they eventually blow over. Um, I didn't know no other time to bring it up, Commissioner Lindley. That's all. I was not talking to the candidate, but just to the tree issue. I know, and I got it. But listen, tomorrow night, uh, the Canopy Roads Committee is going to review a Canopy Roads Management Plan, which is going to deal with. Um, maintenance, taking out, adding to, and all the things that you're concerned with. And you could come to that meeting. It's at 5.30 at the Renaissance Center, and that's going to address exactly what your concerns are, which doesn't have anything to do with our appointments tonight. Mm -mm. But um, I did want to nominate Paul Horn for the canopy of I second that, too. That was, that was not an objection to the nomination, was the Commissioner Partners' comment. So that, that uh, nomination yep. did... Passed. That motion was made by Commissioner Lindley, I believe, seconded by Commissioner Doge, I believe. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Lindley, do you have another recommendation? I do. Uh, for the uh, Tourist Development Council, I'd like to appoint um, Bo Schmitz uh, and uh, Amanda Stringer as our two, two uh, appointments. Motion was made for Bo Schmidt and Amanda Stringer for the Tourist Development Council four-year term. Yes, sir. Uh, Made by Commissioner Lindley, is there a second? 
Seconded by Commissioner Deloge. Any of, uh, yes? Um, uh, we need two thirds of, do, do we need to take a different vote to appoint um, Mandy Stringer? There's a note there about the conflict. I just wanted a little more info on that. Hers, re hers requires uh, that she sign a conflicting, um, what is it's it called, employment relationship because yes. she, she won't be able to vote on Word of South and Tallahassee Symphony because she does some work for those, both of them. Right. I'd, so, thank you, Commissioner Lindley. Uh -huh. I wasn't sure about the vote. If a two-thirds vote approves that and the conflict, or if we needed a separate vote on that. Uh -huh. If it's going to be unanimous, then we would We're good. Vote. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Any objection? Okay. Seeing none, show it is passed. Commissioner Lindley, do you have any more recommendations? Well, yeah. I uh, as long as I'm not the advisory committee on quality growth. Brian Weebler, who. Um, is actually the only person applied for that, so I guess that is our appointee. I'll tell you what, we'll go ahead and do options number one and options number three, since there was just one citizen for both of those. A motion made by Commissioner Lindley. Is there a second? Seconded by Commissioner Deloge. Any objection? Seeing none, we'll now have to uh, appoint for option number four. Right. Um, Commissioner Lindley. That's the Joint School Coordinating Committee, and I would I recommend Lewis Dilbert. Motion made for Lewis Dilbert, seconded by, uh, motion made by Commissioner Lindley, seconded by Commissioner Dozier. Uh, is there any objection to that? Um, what, what, what criteria, Commissioner, are you, Mr. Dilbert, and I, I didn't get a chance to read his, his resume, but without, uh, I, I'm familiar with Dr. Young. I know uh, her, and I'm looking at her VT now. Didn't see any objections coming from anyone on, on his reappointment. Okay. Any objection? He wants to serve again. A lot of people don't want to serve. Say no. We'll show it as as approved. And uh, Mr. County Administrator, do you have any more business before the commission? I one. I'm not sure if we got to option one. Did we? Yes, we did. Okay. Option one. Yes, we did. We did one and three together. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Any more business? Uh, nothing uh, more on the general business agenda. Any, anything on citizens to be heard on the agenda? Item? We have one citizen to be heard. Uh, uh, Delitri Hollinger. Name and address for the record, please, Mr. President. Delitri Hollinger, 501 Alpha Avenue. Uh, as everyone knows, we lost PA before the hurricane. And... Uh, wanted the board to uh, consider uh, honoring PA in some way, um, naming something after him for his service uh, to the community. Thank you. Thank you. I think that would be uh, more than appropriate. Commissioner Lindley, you have a comment on that? Well, no, but if we're on to uh, Commissioner Tom, actually, that was one of my suggestions that at some point we can see if we can have a discussion about something that would be appropriate to uh, name or honor Parwez Alam, who was a very long-standing county administrator who passed away recently, and we miss him and would like to honor him. Mr. Administrator, do you need a motion to that effect, or can you just take direction? <coughs> I would like to get a motion that probably come back to you in the form of an agenda item. Motion made for agenda item by Commissioner Lindley, seconded uh, by Commissioner Deloge. Is there any objection to that? Seeing none, we show it as approved. Um, mm -hmm. Any more speakers? Uh, no, no, Mr. Chairman, we have not. All right. We, we had a nice long meeting today. We'll move now to Commissioner discussion time. Mr. Turney? Not a chance. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Vince, don't mess it up. I won't, but I, I just have to say one thing. Commissioner Proctor reminded me before Delantre came up, uh, Delantre came up the um, uh, about PA, just wanted to... to uh, say again from uh, from the county's uh, staff standpoint our certainly our hearts go out to his family um, we did hear about his passing during the uh, hurricane and for all of the uh, it was nice to have all the, the, the a lot of the county employees there together we shared that uh, what was a somber moment he will be uh, deeply missed an important part of our family I used to joke with him that I was uh, I was with him longer than I was my parents and then and, and in fact uh, I think I'm just short one year or something on that one. So 
anyway, just uh, uh, all the best to his family, and I know he'll be remembered. And, Mr. Chairman, I have nothing more. Thank you, sir. Uh, Commissioner Dozier. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I know there will be more opportunity in the future, but thank you for the comments, all three of you, about PA. Um, that was certainly going into the hurricane with um, a heavy heart. And, Ms. County Minister, when we spoke, I know that that was a difficult day for you and a lot of the county um, families. So thank you for mentioning that. Um, a few just really quick things. One, the Buck Lake issue with Talquin and the city. I wanted to come back to that for only a second here and ask formally for the board support for the county administrator, um, chairman necessary, but I think county administrator, to reach back out to the city manager to get more information. Prior to the October 9th meeting, I was getting a series of emails um, and calls that there are reoccurring power outages in several neighborhoods there um, multiple times a month. The residents had set up a meeting with Rob McGarrah, head of the utilities. That's been postponed until after the storm, of course. Um, but they had more information from Mr. McGarrah than I got through the city manager. And I'm um, and thank you for your assistance, Ms. County Administrator. But this is a critical issue. And then, as I said, there is um, a real problem with those who are on city transmission lines, whether built by Talquin or vice versa. Um, and this is something that I think we need a plan for going forward. But the issue is already on my list for the meeting that was postponed. So I'm not sure. You don't need a motion for that, Mr. County Administrator. Or do you need board support? If I could, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Dozier, I just want to make sure the timing it works for you. We were planning on and wrapping that into our after action report as that well to be back within 90 days. Mr. County Minister, I think that's just fine. I just wanted to make sure we didn't lose track of the constituent issue that was existed before the hurricane. So thank you. Um, two quick things that I uh, thought of during our legislative workshop earlier. I just took note in our federal briefing of um, potential changes in the Farm Bill if SNAP benefits are tied to work requirements and the flood insurance program. Um, we've had constituents call us about um, whether or not they're in the flood plan or flood insurance. Our staff is phenomenal, um, phenomenally helpful when they get in touch with Public Works. Um, and um, I think that's really great, but I just would like to elevate those two issues because we may need to do some outreach if either one of those move forward in federal legislation. Um, and the last thing I saw longest table come up on the slideshow, forgot we did that right after the storm. It's been running so fast. But one thing, and I know we will t dig into this in the after action, but just wanted to take this moment to say the partnership with the media, with WFSU, was exceptional. Um, kept the community informed throughout. Um, Tallahassee Democrat, the other um, television print stations, I think they, from my perspective, they partnered very well. And I will use one example, and it's personal, but we're at the end of a long night here. Um, one of the call-in shows on WFSU unfortunately came 12 hours after I was bit by a spider when Chief Abrams said, be careful for all those bugs and spiders and everything else that were disrupted by the storm. So thank you for that very, very good note. I will remember it in future storms. Um, but it was just those kind of little things that I never thought about in previous storms, and a lot of people were listening to WFSU and all the staff that participated. It was really fantastic. So thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Commissioner Lilly. Oh, thank you. I just had a couple things. I think uh, Commissioner Dozier mentioned earlier in our after action, if we can talk about burning regulations in the county, uh, the debris that was being burned was a problem. So if that could, you know, probably already thought about that. And the other thing, I went to the talent innovation summit uh, that OEV was involved in last week and I spoke to uh, Shelly Bell who works with the school district now uh, and they are uh, seeking the use of heavy equipment in their training and some training programs and they're hoping to get um, that going in the schools uh, maybe by the first of the year or, or sometime in the spring and I was uh, just interested to see if our public works folks could in any way uh, work with with uh, the group to see if there's any sharing or uh, 
you know, some way we could help facilitate that. Sure, we could uh, bring options back to the board. There's a lot of options there. Um, again, it, it, it could include surplus equipment and that sort of thing, all of which would have to come back to you anyway, but we'd be happy to provide a report back to you. So uh, should I make a agenda sure. recommendation on that? We can have an agenda discussion. Uh, Motion made by Commissioner Lindley for a um, agenda item to come back to look at how we can uh, partner with Lively Technical for their heavy equipment operating program. A motion made by Commissioner Lindley, seconded by Commissioner Dozier. Yes, ma'am. Um, if Commissioner Lindley is willing, we have, what's happening at Lively is exceptional. I know they're moving very quickly. Uh -huh. And um, if we're going to ask, Ms. Bell in for the agenda item. I just wonder if we could also get a little update on just what they're doing, what she's finding in the community. I think I that would that. help and be good timing. Thank you. Be great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, any objection to that motion? I didn't hear any. Seeing none, we're sure it's accepted. Commissioner Lilly? And that's it. Thank you. Yes. Thanks for a good meeting. Yes, ma'am. Um, Commissioner Deloge. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just two quick things. Um, let me echo Vince's comments about PA. You know, um, he was the administrator when I first got elected, and I go back to the point where I was the IBM rep back here in the nine, late 80s, early 90s, and the county was one of my accounts, and PA was here then. So I've really had some go back a ways, and, you know, his little sayings, uh, you know, there's the melon and there's the knife. It doesn't matter which you are. The melon always gets cut. I mean, some crowd I can never remember. But it's, he just wore me out, and he was... A uh, uh, really great guy and did good things for the county, and, and, and well, he'll be missed. So, um, uh, secondly, um, I think I'm, I'm a big believer that you see what people are made of when the chips are down, and I think the county looked like a million bucks uh, during the post storm recovery. I mean, and I want I want to personally shout out to Reese and Rob over at the City Electric. Those guys really stepped up their game, and I mean, I I, I don't know about you guys, but I was in constant contact with them. Um, Tracy Bensley at uh, Talquin was a rock star too. That guy's personally calling people at you know night and trying to you know work out deals with everybody. And then the whole public works crew here. We really, really. I mean, there's some outliers, and I had a couple of times where I had to bite my tongue because you know it was three days in, and somebody's complaining about not being able to get to Netflix or something. And I said, there's still you know recovering bodies 70, 70 miles from here. Come on, what, where's your sense of humanity? But um, but really, it, it it put the county in a good light and makes me proud to be part of the family. So anyway, that's it, Mr. Chairman. It's a good meeting. Yes, sir. Commissioner Proctor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, uh, my uh, condolences also to uh, the alum family, uh, PA, uh, fond memories of his leadership. Um, our salute to Mr. Tony Parks uh, again on his retirement. Um, what a great guy. 30 years here, Leon County. Awesome. Um, our um, empathy to the neighbors of uh, Leon County. Um, from everything that I'm determining, um, the spirit, the disposition of um, our county, our community has been one of support. Uh, I received a letter from um, Gaston County Commissioner. Um, um, Eric Henson, and uh, in a conversation which we had, um, Eric indicated that his interest, I'm not sure if I shared that letter with y'all or not, did I? No. Regina, we, we, we give that letter. All right, I'm going to float that letter tomorrow, and hopefully our next meeting uh, we have a chance to look at eight ways in which we can help uh, Gaston County. And Commissioner Dozier, I saw the... Uh, uh, hopeful that we could share um, an interest in, uh, you know, uh, I mean, we don't have a committee for this, a mutual aid um, thingy. Uh, we've not seen this moment where we are, what we're in. And even though the chairman designates and assigns us all to committees, we don't have a regional um, mutual aid thingy. And it's my hope that Governor Gillum would uh, uh, would foster a summit of um, our counties of North Florida to assess and give leadership to what needs to be done for 
total comprehensive recovery. But I would like, since I've received a formal letter from the Gadsden County Commission uh, asking that we consider um, aid and help to uh, the citizens of Gadsden County who have experienced loss, and I'd like to put it in the public domain uh, as a formal request, and I will share that letter, letter tomorrow. I think also that this is an opportunity, as Commissioner Deloge has just indicated, that you never know uh, how tall a guy is until, you know, you, you see them stand up. And you never know how bright and glossy the shine is until the curtains go up. And I think that we have an opportunity to stand tall and to shine even brighter uh, if because what Commissioner Dozier was saying earlier tonight was that to form some coalition that we look at all of these things and evaluate. But I think that we as a county, considering the resources of the city remain standing, can um, and all think more critically about what we can do as guardians for those who find themselves suddenly um, of, in a state of misfortune. Um, Mr. Roosevelt Wilson uh, died, um, I think, the day before yesterday. And uh, condolences to the Wilson family. Much respect to the um, former publisher of the Capital Outlook newspaper, uh, who sometimes uh, was not complimentary of me. And um, we had little discussions and talks about that. And um, he was uh, noted. Um, warrior of um, good for the Florida M University community and his love of the sports program um, has been well chronicled and um, I would like a resolution uh, for uh, his um, home going celebration which will be on Monday uh, at the um, um, Prune Baptist um, Old West Florida Prime Baptist um, headquarters there on Lake Bradford Road. And is that need a motion on that? Motion for proclamation uh, on the life and works of Mr. Roosevelt Wilson. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Proctor, second by Commissioner Dozier in injection. Seeing none, we're short as approved, Commissioner Proctor. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm hopeful that maybe Ms. Post um, can share uh, with our board, uh, with the city, um, some of the upticks of the storm and just how um, incredibly um, um, good, um, you know, the economic value was to our industry of hotels. And I, I love to see that, you know, as a either separate report or inclusive, but I don't want to get lost. I think it's important to know. And then I want to give a shout out to, um, why you looked at me in that tone of voice? <laughs> Y'all should have saw Brittany looking at me like, <laughs> I want to give a shout out to Mayor Andrew Gillum. Um, there's no doubt that he represented um, his family. Uh, he represented our community. Uh, he represented Florida and the university uh, very, very well um, at the uh, debate the other night. Uh, he has become a national talking point. Uh, he is a focus of attention and he is indeed a rising star. And I'm very, very pleased that I've known Andrew as a student um, in my classes at FAMU in political science. I've known Andrew in the 15 years he served as a city commissioner. I've been a counterpart. And I've known Andrew um, serving as a an associate minister at my church, of which he has been a parishioner and congregate. And so to view this young man uh, from the spectrum of his teacher, his um, professional counterpart, and in a um, ministerial uh, role, uh, has given me multiple looks. And I'm, I'm, I'm well pleased with uh, how his life at 39 years young is coming together. And I say to the citizens of this community, y'all need to get out and vote. Vote like it matters. Uh, 
I have said before, that voting is a blood-bought right. And um, if you sit down, you lose the opportunity. And you can't say nothing when it's all said and done. But for God's sake, we have a chance to alter the relationship uh, of Leon County, Tallahassee, that we will find someone who is touting a $15 minimum wage for the workers of Florida and someone who is not going to be hostile to state workers receiving a wage, someone who will open doors as well as vaults of opportunity for this community, which for so long we have been in a barren state, though we exist across the street. The county government is across the street from the state complex. It don't mean a thing. The city government has been across the street from the state complex, and it ain't meant a thing. So we have an opportunity to just possibly to receive a uh, from one who understands the goodness of our community and one who does not believe that Tallahassee is one of the most corrupt cities in America. Someone who does not believe that Tallahassee is one of the most criminal cities in America. And I believe the best way to, uh, when you know somebody's out there that, that putting that kind of low down on you, that you need to go to the polls and vote them down so that they don't bring that mentality in here to harm, to hurt state workers, to harm and deny, to deny a, a, a righteous portion of state revenue and support meaningful to our community. That's why I'm asking this community, y'all need to vote. It's very important. A son of this community is on the ballot. He needs your help. Let's make this happen. I want to thank you, Mr. Chairman. You've done a great job today. And um, I'm in. I'm in. Thank man. you. Yes, sir. Commissioner Doe, you, I think you rung in when Commissioner Pryor was talking about the Gaston County. I did, sir. I just wanted to mention one quick thing. Uh, Commissioner Henson uh, texted me a copy of his letter last week. Um, two days later, we were able to dispatch a truck of supplies to um, his contact in Gaston County and United Way also sent the supplies from their donation drive to Gaston County. That is only the tip of the iceberg. He has been working very hard. That what you brought up, Commissioner Proctor, there is more to come in the future about how we um, recover largely, but this group of people who I suggested earlier, who you all approved, want to help facilitate the needs getting the approval here, that group's going to start working tomorrow um, with Volunteer Leon, with um, Appalachian Regional Planning Council, UPHS, and all of those, so that when Commissioner Henson has that letter of needs, he's got a group and they can put, post it or do something like that for donors um, to start connecting those pieces. So I just wanted to close that loop and let you know um, I think we should share it um, and long-term connection is going to be good, but um, that letter is already in the mix in this conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, it's been a long night. Thank you for your patience. Uh, productive night. Motion to adjourn. We adjourn.